All right, this one comes to us from actual students at Seven Season Studios. So if you like this and you want more, check out Seven Season Studios for all your learning digital art needs. We've got an all access pass with a special price down below for our YouTube family. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, gang, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios. And this tutorial in Affinity Photo is going to be a little bit long and it's going to be something that I normally don't do. Now, there's no downloads for this because I don't have the rights to display or distribute, let's say, any of the files. This came from a client of mine putting together a book cover for their upcoming Amazon publication. So they were designing a book cover. They actually created the template here. So what I'm going to show you today in this tutorial, I'm going to explain how I go about preparing a composite, how I go about masking a composite, how I go about color grading a composite. So this thing is probably going to be about 20 minutes. So not usually my 10 minutes or less type of tutorial, but not as in depth as like the five part series I did on compositing volume one. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this piece here, I tend to start with a rectangle. I'm all low tech with this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to call this the cover mask. Okay. Just double click so that you create that rectangle. No biggie. And now we want to bring in our images for anybody that's taken my compositing course. First thing I always do bring in my images. Now this person wanted to use this image here, but they didn't like all of the red stuff in it, right? So what I did is I just kind of stretched this bad boy out just like that. They didn't want to keep any of the red, but they wanted to keep the ropes. So the step one, lay out that image. Step two, put the other image inside of it. And for some reason, it only wants to show me text files. All right. So we got a couple isolated figures here. Now, when I figure out what I'm going to do with this thing, I really look at where the ropes are going to hit. Now, if I bring down the opacity a little bit, I can get an idea of where the rope might want to hit. I love the fact that the tattoo work comes in and swoops through that rope. I like where it's hitting in the head here going along the side. And I really like how it's flowing right along her headline here and flows up through his thumb. So actually, while the client didn't choose to do this in the end, I'm actually going to morph some of the rope into the image. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. And you'll notice how I work with the flow of the object in order to make that happen. All right. So now that I know where I want to place things, I got to get rid of this mess over here. The easiest way to get rid of this mess, grab your brush and just grab a standard old, we'll go a hard brush, grab black, and pretty much scorch earth, right? Go behind the figure. All you got to do is make sure you don't hit the ropes. How hard is that? And because I'm doing a book cover, they want to put the title up here. So I just need to make sure that I leave enough room, which is why I put a lot of my action down here, leaving enough room here for the book cover. All right. Now we're working with the rectangle here. So I'm going to select the background and the image. I'm going to drag them inside of the cover mask and that just keeps everything really nice and buttoned up. You may not like working in the rectangle. I do. It makes life a little bit easy on me. Now the background, we're going to mask mask layers are here. Okay. When you put on a mask layer, notice it's white. So everything that you're seeing is white. Now there's two ways you can do this. I actually am going to delete this mask layer and I'm going to put it on the, people there. All right. And now I want to remove some of the people to reveal what's underneath. Think of this as being on top of the background and the mask layer is going to reveal it. So I come over to my brush and I'm going to use a very soft brush to begin with. I right bracket key this up. And if white reveals, right, what would conceal probably black. Now watch what happens. You see when I move this over top of her. Okay. Now I want to turn my flow down. I like working at about 10% or so I'll start at 15 
and I want to zoom in. And now you can always undo this. I'm going to swap over to my Wacom tablet right now. And I'm going to take some broad brush strokes with the with the rope there. So I think that I'm pretty happy with that. And you see how I'm just revealing this over? You might like it, you might not, totally up to you. All right, now where is that rope? Now, if you get lost in terms of where the rope is, just turn down the opacity. All right, we're gonna bring this up above just like that. Now you see how I went on a wild tangent over here? That's okay. All right, so we're still masking. Now we've got to come down and we've got to follow this rope. Okay, now you see how I'm taking out more than I probably need right here? That's okay, we can undo this. All right, so now that we've got all our ropes revealed, I keep that mask open because that's going to be very important to me in being able to adjust this. Now I come in and I wanna fade like the rope into her hair a little bit. So if black conceals and I turn down my opacity, what is white going to do? White's going to reveal. There we go. And we're gonna bring a little bit of that back just like that. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna turn this up a little bit over in here. There we go. And you see how now I'm getting rid of the black? There we go. That's gonna really make that tattoo stand out real nice there. So I'm gonna go to about 6%. There we go. All right, that looks good. And we bring a little bit more of that hand in. And we bring a little bit more of her back in. Now, if you want to, you can use a hard brush. So I'm switching over to the hard brush right here. Watch what happens though with the side. I don't like to mask with the hard brush because then it creates a lot of these little artifacts here. And I don't really like that hard look. I'd prefer a softer look. But totally up to what you decide to do there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that rope stand out just a little bit more. Okay. All right. So bottom line is keep working the image until you get it kind of where you want it. Now, the next thing to both of these pieces, I always add an HSL layer. And what am I going to do with this HSL layer where this is orange rope or red rope? And over here, I don't have red rope. Let's just go ahead and desaturate the rope altogether. Now we've taken the discussion completely out. Awesome. And we can also adjust the overall depth of the piece. All right. So we do that to the background. And now we do the same thing. Move an adjustment layer here. HSL and bring it inside of the people. Now I'm gonna go ahead and desaturate them a little bit and you see how that changes the game. You could even lighten them down a little bit. You could darken them a little bit. Notice how I'm making these two images look relatively cohesive, okay? So the piece for compositing that I wanna show you, I masked the two images to look similar I desaturated the background, I desaturated the foreground, and I balanced the two until they got pretty close. So what I do on each individual piece is I always put in an HSL layer. That's just something I do. Now let's go ahead and color grade. I'm going to start by split toning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my highlights, I'm going to turn them up a little bit, and then I'm going to play with this. Now you notice not a lot is happening. Why? Well, move them up above here. Well, and still not a lot is happening. Why? 
because you don't have a lot of highlights. We desaturated it. So now I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to crank up the shadows. Now notice what's going to happen with the shadows. Now I'm able to cast a lot of shadow here. And then I can play with the highlights. I can increase the highlights and I can get just that right look. Now this is for a romance novel. So think about every romance novel you ever read, right? You got to get just that right type of look. And so I kind of like that a lot. I think that that's pretty good. I like to do a split tone on something like this and you see how it blends this in. Now the other part I like to do, I always like to do a selective color adjustment. And there's a lot of blacks in here. So let's go ahead and turn to our blacks, right? So make sure you're there. And now let's turn up the blues and the blacks a little bit. Let's crank up the magentas a little. And let's crank down the yellows. Now I want to make sure I crank that down to kind of get that desaturated look. That's actually pretty cool. So you see how this kind of changes it around quite a bit. One thing that I might also do, I'll use a light filter layer to sharpen it. And I might add in just a little bit of clarity on it. Make it a little bit over the top exaggerated. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a texture file. So now let's go ahead and place in a texture. And let's bring this thing large and in charge here. Bring it up above all and change it to overlay. Now, why did I want to do that? When you change a texture, when you add a texture, it really unifies the two images into one. So this is going to help kind of bring everything together. And so I tend to use an overlay mode. You could use glow, totally up to you, whatever you decide you want to do. And about the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a filter layer for light. Now notice where the light is coming from on these two people. We want to kind of match that. So I'm going to grab this lighting layer and I'm going to move it down. Now you could do a lot here, right? We could do a lot with this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to leave it kind of coming out of this side. All right, let's see. And there we go. And then I'm going to use a little bit of colored light to try to get this right the way I want it. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to drop it down just ever so slightly. Now, why did I do it the way I did? In reality now, you can put the title of that book up there and it's not going to be terribly influenced by the picture, by the light. I think that this is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to file. Save as, and we're going to go working image two. Now, I know this was a little bit different than what I normally do. Usually I include the downloads. Usually it's a shorter 10 minute lesson. But for this one, I wanted to show you how to composite. The important thing is taking each individual area, then doing some universal color adjustments. I always like to unify with the texture. And I personally always finish up with the lighting as my top layer. So I hope you learned a little bit about compositing in Affinity Photo. Hope this was a beneficial 20 minutes for you. If you like more of this, go ahead and check out more of our YouTube content at 7seasonstudios.com. All right. On behalf of 7 Season Studios, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.